a quick video on an older type of Bitex that's been modified with a couple of additions. This version of the Bitex is the one that had the free running oscillator. It was unstable and in a previous video I described how you could put in a ceramic resonator to get better frequency stability. The main disadvantage with that was the tuning range did not cover all the 40 meters. Also, it didn't have a digital frequency readout. If you're willing to tolerate a bit more current consumption, then you can put in an external DDS. Or you could just buy the kit that's currently available, which has the DDS supplied. The external DDS I chose was the CDV from OzQRP. You can see it just here where I'm pointing. The other addition I put in was the Audio AGC. I covered that in a previous video. The combination of the Audio AGC and a digital readout makes for a very useful package ideal for portable operating. Current consumption on receive is about 130 milliamps. That compares with the FT817, which is about three times that. The DDS VFO contributes about 30 or 40 milliamps to the received current consumption. But it's probably worth it, given you get a whole band tuning range, frequency stability, and an accurate frequency readout. That can be particularly useful if setting up skeds with other people. If you follow the instructions, you'll note that it says that the connections to the antenna must be no more than about 5 centimetres. That means the antenna socket must be right near the part of the board that has the antenna connection. Another thing you'll notice is there's some extra space here and here. The reason for that is if I want to later on make the unit multi-band, then I should be able to do that fairly easily. There's space on the panel for a rotary or toggle switch, and space here for additional low-pass filters. For instance, if I wanted to have it operating on 80 meters. And on this side, there's room for another switch and a bank of coils, which could be useful if I want to have other bandpass filters so that it can operate on bands other than 40 meters. Admittedly, it would mean that there are two switches to change when changing band, in addition to adjusting the VFO, but it keeps wires fairly short and is much easier than trying to have it all in one switch. When I first connected the CDV VFO to the BitX, it seemed to be overdriving it. The volume was too high and signals were distorted. So to drop its output a bit, I put an 18 picofarad disc ceramic capacitor between the output of the CDV and the VFO input of the BitX. The other thing with the CDV is there's a transmit connection. You don't have to use it, but if you do, it means that the CDV knows if you're on transmit or receive. That's important if you wish to use its built-in RIT function. I looked at the circuit diagram on the HF Signals website to try and find where the easiest place I could find a plus 12 volts transmit line is on the BITEX circuit board. I eventually found it near R127, which gives 12 volts to the microphone amplifier. Tracing the track along, I found there is a hole where I could bend over a piece of hookup wire and solder it in. You mustn't apply too little heat, otherwise you won't get a connection, or you mustn't apply too much as you risk damaging the track. <laughs> 